Hi everybody, and welcome back to part two of our orange-based diet raw food nutrient analysis. In today's episode, we are gonna take a look at vitamin A, various B vitamins, vitamin C, and the essential fatty acids. So let's start out with all days worth of calories or just about all the calories we need from just oranges, 34 oranges. Like we saw the first time, 88.75 for carbohydrates, protein, and fat, respectively. Now, how did we do for vitamin A? Well, they say you need 3,000 international units. I got about half that, about 1,600 from 34 oranges. Now, what's interesting is there is no actual vitamin A in oranges or any plant food for that matter. Plant foods contain beta carotene, which is the precursor to vitamin A. An enzyme comes along and splits a beta carotene in half, and it makes two vitamin A's. One of the benefits of a plant-based diet is that your body will convert beta carotene into vitamin A as it needs it. When we take too much vitamin A from the outside, vitamin, you know, your body doesn't have the opportunity to regulate how much vitamin A is there. If you take too much vitamin A from the outside, that can create toxicity and lead to all sorts of different problems. So in any case, we're about halfway there for beta carotene or vitamin A equivalent. B1 and B2, more than covered just from oranges. Didn't quite make it for B3. For B6, got about double. What about B9, also known as folate? Got about four times more than they say you need. Folate's extremely important. A lot of people in our modern society are not consuming enough folate simply because they aren't eating very many fruits and vegetables. Eating only oranges, loaded with folate. Vitamin C. Well, we've all heard that oranges are an excellent source of vitamin C, and that's absolutely true. Got about 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. The DRI is 90. And here's a classic example where the DRI is based on sometimes just enough to prevent a serious nutrient deficiency. Like in this case, scurvy, where your gums start bleeding because the gums are made of collagen. You need vitamin C to help collagen have a good structure. Without enough, they start to break down and bleed. So the thing is, we've got over 20 times more vitamin C than that. This is more of an optimum range, whereas this just prevents deficiency. Now, there are two essential fatty acids. Fat's often looked upon as the bad guy, but there are two fatty acids in particular that are literally essential. It means that they are critical for several important functions in the body, yet our body can't make them. So it's essential that we get them from the outside. That's the definition of any essential nutrient, such as vitamin C for human beings is essential. For most other mammals, it's non-essential. They can make their own but we can't, we need it from the outside. These two fatty acids, one of them is an omega-6 fat called linoleic acid. The other is an omega-3 fat called alpha-linolenic acid. So they say 17 grams for omega-6. Now, I know in the last segment, I gave my disclaimer about this is all just ballpark. It's changing all the time as new research comes out and the nutrient analysis is ballpark, and I wasn't gonna make a big thing about each particular nutrient. I put a less than sign in front of the 17 grams because I strongly encourage all of you to look at this as an absolute maximum. In fact, you don't even wanna to get too close to that. Nevertheless, what do we really need? Probably three grams a day or so of omega-6. So. I didn't, I got maybe a little more than half of what I really need from the oranges. Now, omega-3s are so important for so many things. I need about 1.6 grams a day. I like to get at least two, to tell you the truth. Uh, women need about 1.1, according to the DRIs. From 2,000 calories worth of oranges, I got about 0.7. I only got about half of what I need for omega-3s. So I'm actually deficient in fatty acids, 
in addition to some of those minerals we saw in the last episode, like selenium, zinc, and iron. So once again, just like last time, same meal plan. I took away almost 600 calories worth of oranges to go to 24 oranges instead of 34. And in, that, in their place, I added 440 calories worth of vegetables. I added a head of lettuce, a large zucchini, four tomatoes, and a head of raw cauliflower. By the way, I love raw cauliflower. And there's a lot of people out there dissing on my favorite vegetable, as well as its other family members in the raw cruciferous uh, family of vegetables. They say it will damage your thyroid. Now, most days of my life, for the last 25 years or so, I have consumed one head of raw cauliflower with my evening meal. So let's to be on the conservative side. Let's, let's occasionally I'll skip it or it's too expensive or we don't have some, but it's really safe to say out of 365 days in the year, I consume a head of cauliflower 300 of those days. So at least 300 a year. And if you take 300 a year times over 25 years eating a raw vegan diet, I have consumed over 8,000 heads of raw cauliflower over the last 27 years. 8,000 heads, in addition to lots of kale and, <coughs> and lots of collard greens and lots of other raw cruciferous vegetables. I have an upcoming episode about my recent thyroid panel I had done, and I will let you all be in suspense a little bit to tune into that. So the cauliflower was a big part of the vegetable addition. So how did we do now? So look at that. We went from 1,600 IUs of vitamin A, this case beta carotene, to over 11,000. Some fruits are higher in beta carotene, like cantaloupes. If I had 2,000 calories worth of cantaloupes, I would have had about 30,000 IUs. So I got 11,000, so there's lots of beta carotene in the vegetables. How did I do for B1 and B2? Better, those were fine in the first place, just from the oranges. For B3, I'm up to 19 now. DRI says 16, I'm good there. B6, even better than before, I was already good. Folate, still extra good. Folate comes from foliage. So it's in fruit, but it's especially abundant in leafy greens. A lot of this folate was from the salad, so I'm up to 2,500 micrograms. I'm about the same for vitamin C. You can see there's a little bit of a difference here, but the calorie difference is about the same as well. 2,000 milligrams of calcium, about 2,000 calories for oranges, about a one-to-one -one ratio. Just under 1,900 milligrams of calcium for the vegetables, just under 1,900 calories. Now, we know that vitamin C is very abundant in oranges, but we've got the same ratio of vitamin C by taking oranges away and adding lettuce, cauliflower, zucchini, and tomatoes. And by the way, of the vitamin C from the vegetables, over half of it came from my buddy, raw cauliflower. So we're really good in vitamin C. We are better in omega-6s now, but you really need to get a minimum of three grams a day, I would recommend. Not quite there yet, but look at this. We doubled our omega-3 intake. So we're just about there now. Not quite still, but we're really close. So omega-3s are abundant in leafy green vegetables and the lettuce is responsible for a lot of that. So I took some fruit away, added some vegetables, and I filled in the gaps for some of the key nutrients that were missing on a fruit-only diet. So just like last time, now we make additions. Add some chia seeds, add some sesame seeds, and then add a Brazil nut. And you know, for all of these, we were already good in these various nutrients other than the fat, and the bottom line is everything here is still really good. The, the seeds and nuts didn't add a real lot of this other stuff. So we're basically good there. What happened in terms of essential fats? Well, these things are all high in fat. So what happened to the essential fats when we added chia seeds? Well, we added some omega-6s. 
We're up to 3.9 grams of omega-6 now. We're solid on omega-6, and now we're up to 6.5 grams of omega-3. We have got plenty, by just about anyone's standards who's not really irrational, we have got an abundance of omega-3 now. Now, we don't have too much, but that's definitely solid. Chia seeds are an excellent source of omega-3 fats, as well as some of those key minerals that we saw in our previous episode. What happens when I add some sesame seeds? Well, I go way up. I've, I've doubled my omega-6 now from 100 calories worth of sesame seeds compared to all the other fruits and vegetables and chia seeds. I'm up to almost 8 grams, and I've gone up 0.1 gram in the omega-3s because sesame seeds are much higher in omega-6s than omega-3s, as we can see based on this comparison. And finally, when I add my Brazil nut, I get another gram of omega-6. Most of the fat in Brazil nuts is the omega-9 monounsaturated fat called oleic acid. Same thing you find in avocados and olives and other foods. Um, but it does have some omega-6. So we went up a gram in omega-6 and we didn't change the omega-3. So what we have here, we're left with about 9 grams of omega-6, 6.5 grams of omega-3. The omega-6 to omega-3 ratio here is about 1.3 to 1, which is excellent. That's right where you want to be in terms of omega-6 to omega-3 balance. So once again, like I said last time, we have a diet based on fruit. The majority of the calories, 1,400 calories, come from fruit. Another 400 calories or so come from vegetables. And by the way, that's about as much vegetable material as I can get in in a day, reasonably. You could add some vegetables at lunch and dinner. In fact, I, I oftentimes do add some um, other things like kale or collards to my green smoothie during the day. But as far as at one meal at dinner time, that's a lot. It's a whole head of lettuce, a whole head of cauliflower, one large zucchini, and four tomatoes worth of vegetables. So that's about, you know, that, that's a solid amount of vegetables in there. And then about another 400 calories worth of the various nuts and seeds. So we're really good on all of these nutrients. We're really good on the previous nutrients from part one that we saw. And it's an excellent, excellent diet. Like I pointed out last time, I've been eating this way for 27 years now, since 1987. And if you take your typical person who was raw for a while and then they bailed out, there's a lot of people like that out there because they either eat all fruit and they're mineral deficient and there's consequences to that. They become anemic, there's other issues. And then they, they add some meat, they get some iron, and then they say, oh my God, I feel so much better now. And then emotions take over and they say, wow, that was so dumb of me to be a raw vegan, and et cetera, et cetera. So when you take an educated, intelligent, rational approach to raw food nutrition and look at where your various nutrients come from, make sure your bases are covered, it is infinitely sustainable. And not sustainable because you're just slugging it out. Sustainable because you feel awesome and you want to keep doing it. And the food tastes really good and you're abundantly healthy and you feel good and your brain works well and you just want to keep doing it because it feels right. But you've got to take a sensible approach. And I hope by watching these videos, you will all be getting some education in that area so you can keep going as long as you want. For other information, please visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com. Thank you very much.